Oh, on to tonight. Well, the man that knocked out Mark Selby yesterday, Hussein Vafai, plays Scott Donaldson. And on table one, world number 49, Kurt Mafflin, takes on the challenge of 2007 Welsh Open winner Neil Robertson. Dedicated. Neil Robertson, probably one of the most dedicated people on the circuit, never leave any stone unturned, great professional. Arrogant. Neil Robertson carries an air of arrogance around with him, but it is that which gives him the self-belief to continue to be one of the world's top players. Nerd. Neil Robertson's a nerd because he's my age and he's still painting comic figures. Weird. I think any grown man that paints and plays with uh, little toys is uh, a little strange for me. So Neil Robertson against Kurt Mafflin. We're going to pick up this game in frame two. Mafflin took the first frame with a break of 63. Now Robertson's at the table. No score. Let's join our commentary team of John Virgo and Darren Morgan. Well, as in the first frame, careless safety. This red just to the right of the black pots. <laughs> and played that very well, purposely played off the other red and with the backspin on the cue ball, brought it away from it, nicely on the black. Eight. Nine. Kurt Mufflin, East End Londoner. But uh, lives in Oslo in Norway now. Has done for many years with his Norwegian wife. Expensive country to live, he tells me. Yeah, I was there once. I think it's about nine 16. pound a pint. But I suppose they get paid seventeen well enough to afford it. Now every reason here to go into these, and this is one of these where you want to play with a lot of bottom on the cue ball and arc into the reds. It's definitely worth the shout. That's it. Plenty of bottom, plenty of follow through. Arc through them. No, he's on a red. He's a little unlucky. <coughs> you always trust a little bit to look, but there it looked as though it was fine, but it was a red just came with the cue ball. As I say, he's still got a red, but he's hampered slightly. So I'll just pay due care and attention to the pot. Let position take care of itself. Don't try and make it too difficult. He's just struggling here to place his bridge and be comfortable. That's his cube, it's OK, played it well. 25. Yes, and played it positively. He just went in the side of the pocket. I think he went in the middle of the pocket. It would have been nowhere near and in off to the right middle, which could have been a concern. So, a nice, confident start. 30. Has to be said, he's been presented at the, as in the first frame, this frame, with a, a careless safety from his opponent. Didn't make the most 31. in the first frame of his opportunity. And he do so here. Neil Robertson, to me, hasn't settled yet. And then beautifully into the pack of reds have opened very nicely. 36. Straight into the pink. Pink has spread the reds. Choice of them here. And 
Uh, I think it's fair to say he might be a little hard on himself if he couldn't go on and win the frame from here. No, no reason why he can't. Just need to keep good control of the cue ball. Tough. 37. Not quite certain why he felt the necessity there to stun that in. I thought he could have rolled it in and then he'd have been guaranteed a half ball black. As you see, very straight. Good position on the next red. Not guaranteed now. Mm, and hit the black in the wrong side of the pocket needs a bit of luck. Well, once again, he's on a red. 44. He's just about found the gap to be on it. Go up for the blue. Forty-five. Oh, you really had to be the right side of the blue there, Kurt. Now he's going to have great difficulty, I think, in getting good position on the next red. If you're going to be the wrong side of the blue, as you can see in that picture there, it's best to be significantly the wrong side so you can manoeuvre the cue ball in and out of bulk and back down the table. Not going to be easy to do that here. Yeah, and if he puts too much right hand side, there's always a danger you can kiss the green. That's where he'd like to get the cue ball, but he's going to have to put a lot of pace into this, a lot of top spin. We're all going about these players of cue power can play deep screws, but it's in the ball above centre. Maybe a touch of side to help. Got to miss the green. Well, he's missed that comfortably, and he's done very well here. Well, couldn't have played it much better. He was never good on the blue, and you've got the feeling he's never going to be perfect on the red, but he's on it, the one just to the left of the pink. Fifty-one. I can suggest that any better. And now, the ball's at his mercy. Couldn't 58. wish for a better start than this. Ran out of position a couple of times, but he's recovered the situation. Fifty-nine. Keeps leaving himself a little bit straighter than ideal on this black, but there you go. Well, a little bit more angle this time. Pop this black. Goes sixty-six points in front, with just seventy-five remaining. So after this black, another red and a colour required. enough. May just be from red into the right centre. 66. In goes the red, so just a colour required for frame two. Good solid quick start this for Kurt Mafflin. And to dreamt of anything better. To the pots this red. 72. Neil Robertson went even it out of his chair. 73. There you see the construction of this break. 11 red, 6 blacks, 4 blues. Can he make a sentry break? No reason why he can't. Won't need the difficult red on the left 80. hand side cushion. He's moved it anyway. What a positive shot that was to play, and he's landed 81. beautifully on the pink.
87. Eighty-eight. Kurt has made 158 career centuries. Eight this season. Had a 147 twice, so he's a scorer. <laughs> but to make the hundred, he's going to need no, these two reds. I'm just looking at that red near 94. the right middle. He can drop it in if he gets behind it. Ninety-eight. Ninety-nine. Wonderful break. That cue ball needs to slow up if he's going to carry on. Well, he probably won't be going any further, but... Uh, Nevertheless, what an excellent start. And Neil Good Robertson has definitely got something to think about. A couple of loose safety shots. And Kurt Mufflin, in no time at all, is 2-0 up. What a great start for Kurt Mufflin. He extended his lead with a break of 74 to lead 3-0. We're going to pick them up in frame four. Robertson at the table, no score. But you'd have been very surprised One. if you'd have missed that. So, what can he do? Pink tied up, black tied up, not the best of chances. Five. Well, 92% from Neil Robertson. You wouldn't think he's playing all that badly. Six. But his opponent. Four points higher at 96 percent. Well, there you go. Not really surprising that that man there is three nil ahead, I suppose. As I say earlier, he made, made the biggest breaks 63, 104, 74. That's good going. Neil Robson here has just tried to find the gap into the red so he can play the one that's just above and to the right of the black. 11. If he can get enough purchase on the cue ball, he can screw that into the other red and knock it away from the black and be on it. Yep. Perfect. Wow. Now all of a sudden it's a good chance. Yeah, just looking at that pot success, it just proves to us that it's Neil's safety play that's been letting him down so far in this match. There you see it. 40%. Can't leave or have a percentage that low in Neil's safety. 19. In this class. Twenty. He's made a bit of a mess of that. Neil there in screwing back with the power that he had in the cue ball expected to plough right through the middle of these reds, but he can see he glanced off them, and so the cue ball had far too much pace on it to ever be on a bulk colour. Now, has he been fortunate and landed straight enough on the yellow just to roll it in for a red into the left corner? It appears that he was OK on this yellow, but he's under a lot of pressure, and this won't be easy. Yeah, he knocked the yellow in, but not as confidently as he needed to. He needed to be straight on this red to the left corner, 22. which meant putting a bit more pace in the pot. So he made certain of the yellow, but this red now more difficult. 23.
30. That was a much more difficult shot than it may have appeared. Injecting pace into the cue ball there from near the side cushion. Judged it well. Chance here to go into the pack of reds. Always need to be careful we don't pot a red. Oh, that's good. Now near. Here's your chance. You really must go on a winner frame from an opportunity like this to put any pressure on the opponent. Yeah, I wanted to play the black, uh, the red that's immediately above the black, but can't get through to that, so calling for the extended rest, extension on his cue. But no problem with this red to the left corner. All these modern day pieces of equipment, they've never had it so good. No, you know what, when I was a little kid, we used to use these little um, vacuum cleaner Parts. You know, these yes. these pits, when you put these seven. old vacuum cleaners together, like one telescopic things, you put one piece into another, into another, and, you'd, and we used to use a small plastic end of the vacuum cleaner as an extension on your cue. Well, there you go. Dominic, always thinking. We used to just climb on the table in Salford. The club I used to play in West Wales in Pencada, they used to have this sort of army cadet 44. Um, thing next next door for, for, for junior um, young sort of hooligan, shall we say. <laughs> and I, I often used to practice in the club, you know, one evening, and I, I'd, I'd, I'd take the cover off the table, and there'd be footprints, boot prints all over the table. They'd be jumping around 45. all over the place. I don't know. Society, hey? Meanwhile, back at the table, Neil Robertson is in a good position now to get his first frame on the scoreboard and go to the mid-session interval with at 53. least something to show for his efforts. Sixty. Sixty-one. The black. We'll put him in the snookers required. There you go. Sixty-eight points to lead. Sixty-seven remaining, but not for long. Sixty-eight. You'd be amazed if he doesn't make the century here. Sixty-nine. As I said earlier, he's a scorer. Already made. 612 career centuries. What would that put him on? 76. That third on the all time list, would it, I would think? Behind Ronnie, Stephen Hendry, maybe behind John Higgins, I don't know, but of course, I mean, an incredible milestone of a few seasons ago. He made uh, 103 centuries in one season. That was How unbelievable. That? Yeah. Well, okay, I know there's a lot more tournaments, but uh, that was tremendous. 84. Well, he's just sneaked past this red, so he can pot this red to the left corner. Eighty-five. <laughs> Enough to play this pink with the rest. He's not one of these players, and there's so many of them now, can play with either hand. I'm not saying in the class of Ronnie, but uh, Jack Lazowski, he plays uh, with either hand. Judd Trump can do it. I'll tell you who's uh, fantastic with the opposite hand is Matthew Stevens. And Matthew, yeah, he's always been pretty good. Played a cannon there, missed it. So we'll need a Neil Robertson special 91. now to keep this going. 
Wouldn't bet against it. He's so good at this shot. Oh, we thought it was in. I thought it was in. But, it isn't. but we get another concession from Kurt Mafflin. He's on his way to the dressing room, followed by Neil Robertson. As I say, at last he's got something to show for his effort. Mid-session interval. Kurt Mafflin leads three frames to one. So Robertson won two of the next three frames. What an incredible cutback from him. Well, uh, let's just have a look at a key moment in this. One hundred and twenty. He's managed to pull it back. Absolutely. He? I mean, he's played, this is what Robertson does best. He's had breaks of sixty-nine in frame seven, and this magnificent break of one hundred and thirty-six. Uh, and you know, it's uh, it's uh, excellent snook from Neil. But Kurt Mafflin, of course, he's not been there very often. That's the problem. And of course, he's be, he'll be kind of. Um, a little bit anxious now, the fact that it's gone to four all. Absolutely. And actually, the last time that Kurt Mafflin actually uh, played Neil Robertson mm. was at the German Masters. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he was on the wrong end of a, a very heavy defeat, a 5-1 defeat. Well, so to come back and show what he can do yeah. in this, in, yeah. in this uh, particular match Kurt is Mafflin's brilliant. Kurt has been a very good player for a long time. We know Robertson's a seasoned campaigner and has won many, many tournaments all the time. But uh, Kurt Mafflin is very close to being a winner tournament. And we've seen lots of strange results in this week. But uh, it's going to be tough for him now in this last frame. Are you surprised from what we've seen from Neil Robertson? Did you expect him to um, find it hit form sort of earlier on in the match? Yeah, I thought so. I mean, obviously, he's in a no-win situation like a lot of the top seeds have been this time. They're playing people that are seeded so much lower than them, and they, so they're expected to win. But obviously, uh, Robertson had a very, very slow start. But in saying that, Mafflin's made 63, 104 and 74 to lead 3 nil. So whoever you play, you're going to win those three frames. So Robertson worked well to hang on to his coattails. And, of course, now he's clawed his way right back into the final frame. What an exciting final frame it's it will be. It's going to be very good. It's it going to be a quick shot. Yeah, it's going to very be. much so. Yeah. Well, uh, I guess, what, what would, what's going through both of these players' minds at this moment? Robertson will be very confident now, the fact that he's come back from 4-2 behind to 4-4. Kurt Mafflin, of course, will be anxious. The fact that, you know, in frame, in frame seven, he had a very good chance when he was in the balls to win the match 5-2 and broke down. That could be playing on his mind a little bit now. The fact that he's lost the next two frames, albeit Robertson, as we mentioned, made 69 and 138. So at least now we've got to enjoy the final frame. OK, well, let's see who makes it through frame. to the semi-final. Back we go. Yeah, both players got a very good reception as he came back in. Poor break-off shot there from Neil Robertson. Careless. He's left a cut on. He's just having a look because there is a screen above the, the lights, but looks to me as though Kurt can get past this yellow to play the pot into the right middle. Well, maybe he can. Is he going to play it in the middle or the corner? Played it in the corner, got it. Does he have an angle on the green? One. I think he has. Couldn't see enough of it to play the cut. What a tremendous pot to start this frame. <laughs> Played the positive shot. He wouldn't mind this running on a bit so he could get through to the red that's closest to the left corner. And he can do. Four. Now, what shot are you going to play here, Kurt Mafflin? Because if he cuts the red in and plays it with a natural angle, it's going to, the keyboard's probably going to cannon the red and the black. I'm not sure he can do a lot about that happening, to be honest with you. He may try and just knock the black on him for the opposite corner. Oh, no, he could avoid the red Five. and the black. Hasn't finished too badly on the blue, but oh, it's not the best angle, really. The pot's OK. Don't know if that red just to the left of the black will pot. Ooh, it just went in. Any harder, it wouldn't have dropped. And he stayed Ten. down. I think he thought he'd missed it. Mm. 
Just get that feeling, the way he wobbled the blue in, that that red was going to prove a li little bit more difficult than the blue. So he had the first chance, didn't make the most of it. Tough, isn't it, when the pressure hits you? Muscles seize up. You tend to be all tense and you don't go through the ball just as well and you tend to hit the balls thickly then. I'm sure Neil would love that black to be in the open. He'll probably fancy scoring more heavily in these type of situations than his opponent. Played that cross double, hoping to send that red into the main cluster, but he hasn't done. He's knocked it over the left corner. So another chance for Kurt. Now the thing is with this, the natural angle is to run into the bunch, so he's gonna have to dig down a little bit to avoid or widen the angle. The one thing you mustn't do is miss the pot. Make certain you get the pot and trust a little bit to luck for position. You can't afford to miss the pot. Foul. My word, how unlucky it was Near that. Robertson, seven. Well, cursed. Oh, this is absolutely devastating for Kurt Mafflin. Look at that, he's cannoned the red, which has cannoned the black into the pocket, and you can see his immediate disappointment because he knew sure. he'd also left Neil Robertson what? in with a golden opportunity. And now look, black is on its spot, no red in the way. Oh, what's going through that man's mind? He'll be hoping and praying that he hasn't played his last shot. As I say, with Kurt's shot, you just had to make Six. certain you put the red. You could not envisage knocking the black in. But the key now to this frame, or whether Neil Robertson makes a sizable contribution, is what angle can he get on the next colour after the next red to try and open up the cluster, because there's nothing available. And I would suggest you play for a ball colour. The green, probably. Exactly, John. Hello. I was thinking the same thing. Green, it has to be. Because to go into the side of the pack from the green is the perfect shot to play. Twelve. Bit short for that, but it can still do it from the brown. Could not have worked out better. So that 16. terrible piece of bad luck for Kurt Mafflin could be his last shot in this year's Welsh Open. It's a cruel game. Seventeen. Well, didn't want to be this close to the side cushion. If he drops this blue in dead weight, it'll be OK. He didn't want to be this far away from it. Not a nice shot to play this under pressure. Perfect cannon, now back in perfect position. 22. Just a case, even for him, holding yourself together. 23. 
30. Just wondering if he plays for the pink, and where the pink will go when it's re-spotted. Could play for the black quite easily enough. But he's decided on 31. the pink. Bit late to have a look now, Neil. of the pink spot not available. It's got to go in a direct line with the middle of the top cushion. Paul Corey will use the the blue and the black. We'll just get it lined up with those two balls. Feels that's as close as he can get it to its own spot. Okay. 37. So the lead now goes to 34 and the reds in the open will be enough. Doesn't have to bother about those two reds that are tied up by the pink. 38. <coughs> All about keeping a tight rein on the cue ball. You see his lead 45. now is 42 points. Just make every pot as easy as possible because under pressure you can miss almost anything. You can see him adding it up. You'll need three of these remaining reds and three of them are in the open. 46. Well, pot the black. Put him 50 points in front with 59 remaining. So after this black, another red and a colour would do it. And he's on the red, and it will automatically be on the colour. Red and the black to go 58 53. points in front with just 51 remaining. And that so unlucky he was when he potted this red. How could you imagine you would knock the black in and not get another shot? Someone once wrote a book about snooker. 54. Called It's a Cruel Game. And we've seen an example of why. It's unfair sometimes. And that's it. The applause tells you Snook is required. So Kurt Mufflin, a little shake of the head, one of resignation. But you've got to say, Dominic, every credit 62. to Neil Robertson. 3 0 behind and stuck at it. Yes, Johnny never changed his game, kept the same tempo, went for the same shots. It was 3 0 behind, as you say. And then, you know, it came back breaks of 136, 91, 69. It's been a great match, but I'm so, so gutted in a way for, for Kurt Mafflin, what happened there. So, as you say, it's a terribly cruel game at times. I feel so sorry for that man there. 67. Yes. And, well, the last time he was at the table, he potted a red. And the next time he gets out of his seat, it will be to shake the hand of Neil Robertson. As we say, it's very cruel. And Neil will be saying, how oh, unlucky were you there, but it's no consolation. Kurt Mafflin, he'll feel he should have won that, but Neil Robertson, giving every credit, turned out like all top players, back against the wall, never gave up, fought to the end, and runs out a 5-4 winner. He's in the semi-final. 
Wow, so after dropping the first three frames, the 2007 Welsh Open winner, Neil Robertson, is through to the semi-final of the Welsh Open. What a turnaround. What, you've got to feel sorry for Kurt Mufflin, to be perfectly honest. OK, he should, perhaps should have won 5-2, as I mentioned at our last uh, little break there. But we're going to watch a shot now. Where The thing with this shot he's going to play, he's got to play it firm, and he's got to try and split the reds and obviously free the black. He's done all of that. But as we can see here with the shot, it just absolutely knocks Foul. the black in, which is unbelievable. OK, with the reds sitting as they are, you wouldn't have thought Robertson had got too many from that chance. No. But he ends up getting on the brown, and he plays the most beautiful shot on the brown. Just sort of watch the way he splits these reds here. Plays with lots of right-hand side, just before the middle pocket to make the spin work, into the bunch, and then he went on to make the lovely break to 67 to finish the match. Feel very, very sorry for Kurt, but as John Virgo alluded to in commentary, experience means an awful lot in this situation, especially in quarter-final matches. The experienced player would normally come out on top. And that's what counted for um, Neil Robertson, who's been here before. He knows what it means to win Absolutely. I mean, Neil, Neil Robertson's playing very, very good this week. We, I mean, the breaks we've had this week have been amazing. We've had two one four sevens, three one forties, two one three nine. The standard from every player has been very good, but Robertson's up there and Bingham was doing very well as well. So both, uh, both matches uh, have been very good this evening. And what about from Kurt's perspective? I know that you said mm. that, uh, of course, he'll be so disappointed considering, you know, the last time they met, the mm. result that happened mm. with uh, Neil winning 5-1 mm. well, at the Kurt, Masters, as we Kurt, said. But, yeah. you know, to come back yeah. and to win the first three frames, he got off to such a good start. Kurt's been a very good player for a long time, and I'm surprised actually he hasn't got to a few more semi-finals. He started off, as we discussed earlier, with breaks of 63, 104 and 74. That would beat any player in the world playing that kind of standard. Unfortunately, you have to play that all the time. Kurt's very close to... to to, you know, get into a lot of stages of many, many tournaments. Yes. He's a very good break builder. The key with this game is you've got to score when you're in. Kurt, Kurt Mafflin is one of those players that does score when he gets in. OK, well, let's just take a quick look at what happened in the other quarter-final today between Vafai and Scott Donaldson. Well, the same Vafai, if you'd seen last night, was the man that knocked out world number one Mark Selby. Well, there was no stopping him in this one. Willie, he was on fire. He played very well. I mean, usually when you win a match 5-1, you expect it to be a, like, a bit of one-way traffic. But he made breaks of 50 or above in five of the frames he won, including a break of 90 yards. So well, what Fafai is doing is scoring very well. Scott Donaldson really didn't have a chance tonight. Well, he had word with us afterwards. This is what he had to say. Very good feeling. I had this feeling before as well because uh, I lost many times to quarter-final. I think three, three four times I lost in the quarter-finals. Now... I know how to win in the quarterfinal. In my first year, I keep losing my decider frame, and second year, I, I didn't lose decider till now. Uh, everything is about learning and confidence. Now I have confidence because I beat Mark Selby. I get a big confidence in the tournament, which is I needed in the tournament. And uh, as I said, when you beat the top players, you have to fly. So hopefully I can fly as well. <laughs> <laughs> Smiles all round for Hussein Vafai on a, on a brilliant victory. And uh, likewise, I think we're going to actually uh, hear he from is. Neil Robbins. There Never he looked is. like getting beat. <laughs> Neil. <laughs> that would have made, that would Congratulations. Have made. First of all, talk to us about what was going through your mind in those opening three frames. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I know I've, I've played Kurt a lot over the last few years, and uh, when he's on his game, he's, he's one of the most dangerous players in the mm. world, you know. I think. Um, He's got all the ability in the world to win tournaments. He just needs to tighten up uh, certain areas with his safety, and I think he will win tournaments. Uh, you know, he got off to a flyer. Um, I made a few unforced errors, not like terrible shots, just just little shots that, that you know just happened to go wrong, and uh, he punished me fully. So I didn't do a great deal wrong. I just had to um, uh, try and create my own chances and, and score heavily, which is my game. We both play a similar type of game. Mm. Uh, perhaps I'm just a little bit more polished in, in the safety department. Mm. And Willie and I were talking about it before in the studio that, you know, the fact that you've had big game experience, you've been here before, did that help today? Yeah, I think so, because he, uh, I mean, at 4-3, I think it was, he went for a red that was near the bulk pocket, um, and it was a do or, do or die. Like, mm. if, he, if he pots it, he probably wins the mm. match. The so best chance he had, I think, that. was when it was 4-2. He got in very early, and he perhaps played the wrong shot when he had a red at the back of the pack. He could have played it to split the reds and stay on the black. Remember that shot? Yeah, was yeah, it 4-2, yeah. so he had a chance there at 5-2. But the thing is, like we're talking about, big match experience. Yeah. Neil's been there, done it, got the T-shirt many, many times. Kurt's going to get a little bit anxious. He's playing one of the best players in the world in the semi-final, and he, he probably missed his chance there, but Neil hit it on the head. He's just got to tighten up a little bit. Break-building-wise, yeah. Neil, I think, 
think he's one of the best in the game. Yeah, I, I absolutely. Love, he's I one love of these players. Play. I mean, uh, from a personal mm. level, know him really well. Like we mm. spend Christmas together in Norway mm. and stuff, and. Uh, I just want him to do so well. Yeah. I'm, I'm gutted the way he's ended up losing mm. that because he's potted a really good long red. He's knocked the black in, and yeah. you know, obviously, I've, I've had to you know mm. make a really good break under pressure. But um, the brown was an excellent shot, by the way. The brown, the pack. I'll yeah, yeah. Into it that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in there they split perfect. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, I'm sure I'll be getting a text off Joe Perry later about that split. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's Hussein Vafai next for you. Yeah, he's um, <laughs> yeah another one uh, overseas player. I always like to see the overseas players doing really well, you know, and uh, it's fantastic to see. He obviously had a great win last night, and he followed it up again today. He's, he's looked like he was running around the table, and you know he's, he sort of wrapped that match up very mm. quickly. So um, yeah, very dangerous player. He's going to go out there and enjoy it, obviously. Um, so it's important for me to apply the pressure early. Did you enjoy out there today? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was, I was watching some of the table <laughs> fitters. They're like ripping up all the carpets. Oh. Running, you know, I'm thinking, yeah, there could be oh. worse things. <laughs> Get ready for the one yeah, table absolutely. situation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but it, as a whole, the Welsh Open. What does it mean for you to to be part of it? Yeah, I mean, I got to the semis a few years ago, uh, where I lost to Ronnie, and uh, it was really disappointing. And then. The last couple of years, um, I've been playing opponents playing absolutely out of their skin. Um, last year, I lost making three centuries in the match, lost mm -hmm. to Burns 4-3. The year before, I had a couple of tons, lost to Lee Walker 4-3. So this year, you know, I've won a couple of deciders, so maybe luck's with me this year. Absolutely. So, and uh, earlier on when you were talking to Ian in the studio, you were talking about how you're just feeling quite relaxed. You're just quite relaxed about the whole thing. Are you feeling that now? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to play my practice game. Um, mm. A real big uh, motivation for me this season was to try and speed up the tempo. I lost too many matches the last couple of years where I've tried not to lose mm. rather than going out exactly. and playing how I would in practice. The know? match there where you made the 147 and followed it with the 140, you, you, your shot time was 18 seconds a mm. shot there. Mm. So that's the speed I like to see you play. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah, you know. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, <laughs> Neil. Best of luck. We'll let you uh, go and have a bit of a rest. Yeah, and uh, best you. of luck tomorrow. And of course, the biggest shock of the day came early on when uh, Joe O'Connor managed to beat John Higgins. Let's see how he got on.